Hello and welcome to this A-level physics video on CAT scanners or CT scanners. We're going to talk about the basic principles and operation of a CAT scanner, how it produces images and some of its advantages and disadvantages. So we've got two pictures on this page. The first one is of a CAT scanner and uh, now this ring here is the business end of a CAT scanner and we're going to talk about what's inside that ring in quite a lot of detail. The second part of the CAT scanner is this platform here which is actually a bed that the patient lies on and the, the bed can be inserted and retracted through the ring in order to get the point of interest that we want to image inside the ring. Up here we can see a CAT scan of a heart and, and this shows the immense detail that we can gain these days from, from CAT scanners and how the computer can be used to render 3D images of body systems. Okay, so how does the CAT scanner work? Well, CAT uh, is an abbreviation for computed axial tomography. Right, so the computed um, implies that we use a computer to produce the images, which indeed is, is how the images are produced. Axial means that we can produce images along an axis or along a slice, and that gives you some sort of idea of what the word tomography means because the word tomos is a Greek word which means slice and the word graph obviously means a picture or an image. So we're actually producing slice pictures of the body and the way the computer does this is if that's the axis of the body so you've got the head over here and you've got the feet down here the computer will actually take slices through the body in this direction and build them up to produce an image. Now the image can be of individual slices or it can be of a combination of slices giving you a 3D image. And here we can see a slice through the center of the head showing the eyeballs here and some of the nasal cavities and some of tissues of the brain and we can even see some of the cartilage along here of the ears. It's quite a nice little image. Okay, so how does the, the CAT scanner work? Well, in this ring is the kit that's used to produce the image, which consists of an x-ray tube, which we've talked about in previous videos, which produces a wedge-shaped beam of x-rays, which passes through the scanner along this sort of uh, path through um, the hole in the middle where the patient lies. So the patient, the slice of the patient will be exposed to the x-rays. Obviously some of those will be absorbed by the patient and on the other side of the ring is a bank of detectors which covers that wedge shape area there um, and these detectors are used to detect the intensity of the x-ray at various points as it comes through the patient right and then that intensity information is sent to the computer which builds up a picture of what's happening each of these detectors is called a photomultiplier tube now you don't need to know the details of how a photomultiplier tube works but in essence what happens is the x-ray comes in to strike the photomultiplier tube along the cathode and it's a photocathode which uh, which means that the photon strikes it and due to the photoelectric effect the energy of the x-ray will be absorbed and an electron will be released and the electron travels along to what we call a dynode and this dynode is at a higher voltage than the photocathode typically maybe a hundred volts and then the next one will be at 200 volts 300 volts and so on 400 volts there 500 and then the anode at the other end will be the voltage typically of about 600 volts so when the electron strikes this dynode it's absorbed and more electrons are given off okay so these electrons travel along and are attracted to this dynode which is at an even higher potential when they strike uh, this dynode for each electron striking this dynode more electrons are given off and so you get a, a multiplication a sort of cascade uh, of electrons and by the time you get to the anode at the other end you've got hundreds of thousands of electrons that have been given off. So for each one x-ray striking 
the photocathode, you get a large amount of electrons um, at the other end, which produces a measurable current, which is measured by the computer. Okay, so that's what's happening down here. All right, so what that gives you, um, each detector will give you a pixel. Now, a pixel is short for a picture element. Um, and, that, and obviously that's the same in a television. Now, a pixel is a two-dimensional quantity, all right? It just gives you one um, two-dimensional point on, you know, in an array of pixels, which gives you a slice. But obviously with, with CAT scanning, we're interested in 3D modeling as well. And so these pixels are built up um, along the third dimension to give you what's called voxels. And a voxel is short for a volume element. So these are um, kind of points in the body in, in three dimensions, which can be built up to produce a picture. And the computer can image along any access, axis of these voxels that it likes. So it can produce slice images of any uh, configuration in, in, at any angle in, along any axis. Okay, now the whole point about the cat's the, 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 the CAT scanner, the actual machine itself, is the X-ray tube and the detectors are part of this ring and they are rotated at high speed, um, you know, a few revolutions per second. So they whiz around and around and around and around um, and this produces the detail in the images that, that we see of, of the patient. And so there's a large amount of data produced by the CAT scanner. Now, if you want to see a video of this, if you just type in CT scanner at max speed into YouTube, you can see the uh, videos of, of, of one of these machines with the cover removed and the ring rotating round at high speed, which is quite a good thing to see. So I recommend you have a look at that. Okay. Now, actually what happens is that Usually, we want to image a section of the patient, let's say the chest. So we want to image this patient from there to there because he's got something wrong with his lungs or whatever. And so what happens is the patient, the bed can, uh, which the patient lies on is slowly inserted through the, the tube. This one will be raised up higher and then inserted that way with this, this woman on it as the technician um, operates it. So as the ring rotates around the patient and the patient goes through at the same time, what you actually get is a spiral um, pathway around the body that the, the scanner um, produces. Um, the detail, the, the speed of rotation means that the, the resolution of, of, this, of these spiral slices, i.e. the distance between one slice and the next is very, very small. So we're talking about a resolution of about 0.6 millimeters. Um, and because of the speed of rotation, these systems can image the body extremely quickly. Um, and it can do a full chest x-ray like this in about half a second. So we're talking about quite impressive technology. So here we can see some images produced by CAT scanners. Um, here are two images of, of a patient's chest. This one you can see is done along... Um, the 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 length of the body and this one is done transversely across the body uh, same x-ray and the technician can manipulate these 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 images it can go you know by just manipulating the mouse the technician can change the axis in 360 degrees and it can even produce flyby pictures from the head to the feet by just scrolling the cursor wheel scrolling the mouse wheel sorry and producing images that fly through the, the body. And again, there are lots of very good videos on YouTube. If you just type in CT fly through or cat fly through, then you should get some decent results to have a look at. And this picture here shows how the CT scanner can isolate different body systems and produce 3D rendering in false color of those body systems and you can see here that the, the resolution of each slice is 0.625 millimeters so that's quite a good resolution that we can get out of that all right um, 
Here's a picture which is a fantastic uh, exposition of, of, of what uh, CT scanners can actually do, which is a 3D rendering of the skull. And you can see the detail in the bones here. And the bones have been isolated in this picture to show the detail in the bones without the interference of any other body tissues. And what the technician can do in producing these images is, is just take whatever section of the body he likes and just fly through each individual body, body system. In this case, the bones of the skull. Manipulating it along any axis they like to produce fantastic images. Okay, so there we go. So, obviously, CT scanners have got massive advantages. And in essence, these are some of them which you need to be able to identify. Any plane in three dimensions can be imaged, and this can be manipulated in whatever time frame the technician requires. Now, the problem with, with traditional x-rays is there's not much differentiation between uh, soft tissue of different types. So if two different tissues have similar attenuation coefficients, it's not very easy to image them. With CT scanners, the di the, those differences can be visualized. Um, so you can see here, for example, this is uh, a cross section of the intestine and you can see the difference between the different types of soft tissue. Obviously the bones show up very bright and here are a couple of ribs here, here, here and here. Um, but also you can see lots of structure in the soft tissue and that you can get with CT scans that you can't get with traditional x-rays and without the need for contrast media which is very important. Uh, and obviously another advantage is that CT scanners are very very precise. Um, the data is all logged and the position in the body is all logged and so in order to to identify the position of, of, of a problem within a patient it's extremely easy with CT scanners. So do they have any disadvantages? Well the main disadvantage is that a dose from a, T, a CT scanner is much larger than that of a normal x-ray. So the patient is subject to more x-radiation which can obviously cause damage and you can see some, some differences here. So a normal radiograph of a chest, a traditional x-ray, will give about 0.02 millisieverts of energy. So that's very small. Um, if you're talking about a CT chest scan, we're talking about 4 millisieverts. So many times higher than a, than a traditional uh, x-ray. Uh, in terms of you know the abdomen and pelvis slightly larger uh, CT scan with, 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 with more body systems imaged it's about double that again and if you compare that to the annual background dose in various parts of the world we're talking about a couple of times higher than, than, than your average uh, background dose living in the UK and even in Cornwall where background radiation is, is quite high we're talking about that sort of magnitude. All right, so we're talking about quite large doses compared to normal x-rays, and that's the major disadvantage of CT scanners. And that's the end, so thank you very much.